This message might seem a little familiar to my uh, Zoom family, the Lahara. We, uh, we went out there a few years ago, and this was kind of the topic. And uh, I'm going to get my notes up for one second. You know, the thing is about the songs we're listening to this morning, I love them because like the, the song that Marina sang about we need a fresh wind. How many of you, you know, show of hands, how many of you think we need a fresh wind? Amen. Amen. How many of you think that uh, we need to see something different, you know? And, and that's exactly what God has been doing in us, you know, in, in this whole time. Since we started this church, my notes are gone. <laughs> it's all right. We'll make it happen. <clears throat> Since we started this church, God has uh, put it upon us to, to. This is not a. I don't want it to be a typical church where we go to a building and everybody sits down and everybody goes through the motions and everybody is, uh, you know, just oblivious to the fact that we're at war. Are you a believer? I don't know. Yeah. So you know we're at war, right? And who are we at war with? We have an enemy called Satan. And his, his goal is to destroy us. To steal, kill, and to destroy. And man, he's been working hard. So like my, as a pastor, with the vision that God has given me is He's telling us that I want you to be different. And I'm considering us as this is a discipleship. Uh, we don't even, if, if meet, the meeting place, church isn't even in the title. But we do say church because when we get together, we are the church, we are the body. We're disciples. We're not here playing church. And what we've been talking about is. In the beginning, the very first series that we had was called Overcome to the Table, where God gave me this message to share, and it's about what He's offering us. He says, there's a place in heaven for you and for me. There's a place for us there. But there's some things that keep us from getting there. He said, there's drunkenness. You know, there's the, the, the spirit of, of rebellion, the spirit of Jezebel. There's, if you want to pray to another God, don't expect to be seated at the throne with me. And he says to be sober-minded. And the reason why he says that is because when you're drunk, you are, you're, you're drunk, your mind, you don't have control anymore. You've just given up control. And then the enemy comes in and he starts feeding something, something dark. It's the opposite of what God is telling us. God is telling us, I want you to look at me. I want you to love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. With everything you have, I want you to love me that way. That's the, the, the best number one commandment when, they, when the disciples were asking. They're asking, what's, what's the best commandment that, that's out there? He says, this is it. Love my Father, love Jesus, love God with everything that you have. And there's blessings in that. That's what we're talking about. You know, we're this, the next season that we moved on to is blessings. How can we be blessed when we're gossiping about each other? See, God is telling us, I want you to be number one with me. And I want you to be together with everybody else. And I've called you to me. And I have a purpose for you. And as you keep your eyes on me, this is God. As you keep your eyes on me, I'm going to bless you. And when, you're, when you love me that much and you give me your whole heart, you're going to have love for others in, in the midst of it. Amen? Amen. John chapter, John, 1 John 4, 7 to 21. So I had all these notes. So I didn't have to look in the Bible, but I'm going to look in the Bible. 
you know what? It's not a surprise. This morning, everything has fought me. Everything, and uh, I had to. If I got to, if I got to dig into this word, I'm going to dig into this word. And if you're struggling with anything, dig into this word because it's got the answers. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to First John, chapter four, verse seven to twenty-one. I'm going to read to you a little bit today. I don't like to read, but I'm going to read to you today. 1 John 4, 7 to 21. Seven to twenty one. I'm sorry, first John. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that the world loved God, but that he loves us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved, so loved us, we, ought, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Amen? Amen? We know that we live in him, and he is in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in the world, we are like him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God, must also love his brother. Now there are some other scriptures. Matthew 5, 43 to 47. I'm building a case here. Like I said, I had all this on my... Everything was fighting me today. Everything. What's that? Yeah, we got this. God's got this. Amen. Amen. So if we're supposed to love each other. Should we hate our enemies? You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are you not even, are, you, are not even that the tax collectors doing that? 
And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The reason why we're talking about love is because who's a Christian? See a hand. If you're a Christian, that means God's love is in you. But if you're walking in the world, where's God's love? A, we, we can ask the question, what is a Christian? And we might, the, there's, a, there's a common view that says a Christian is anybody who claims to believe in Jesus and to follow his teachings. Anybody is a Christian that, believe, that claims to, I, I reject that. And the reason I say I reject that because I don't want you to claim to believe. And I don't want you to claim to follow his teachings. I want you to actually believe and actually follow his teachings. Because now you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ is in you, then there should be love coming out of you. I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. I, I'm not perfect. I have days where I get angry. You know, I've had, I have days where, you know, I work on cars for a living. And so sometimes you turn that wrench and you end up hitting your, your knuckle really hard on a piece of metal. And the first word that comes to your mind isn't always the best. Of course, back in the day, I didn't used to be convicted of that. But now that I'm walking with God, I, I say other things like, shoot. <laughs> I say other things that because there's a conviction in the Spirit of God that's in me. He wants me to be different. And it doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight. Amen? Amen. Amen. John 13, 34 and 35 says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will be. I better put these glasses on. <laughs> <clears throat> By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So, that's that's the, a Christian. That's a characteristic that a Christian will have. You're going to have love. You know, it, and it comes from the Father. We can't have it to give to somebody if we don't have Him in us. Love is the mark of a Christian. First Corinthians sixteen fourteen. Let's go to that real quick. Are you with me? I know you're brand new here, so we have we have people here, and we also have people on Zoom on the screens you see there. They're all live with us. So we're at First Corinthians sixteen fourteen. Now let's go 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. And do everything in love. Here we are again talking about love. But, but what happens when there's a problem between some of us brothers in Christ? What happens when Maybe, maybe Larry, maybe one day, you know, you do something that gets under my skin, you know, what am I going to do with that, you know? What does the Bible say about it? That's the question we can ask. What does the Bible say when we have conflict between us? Let's go to Luke 17, 3. I'm going some more with this. start out with um, verse 1. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person whom they come through. 
It would be better for him to throw into the, to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times he comes back to you and says, I, I repent, forgive me. You've got to forgive him. Right? But what if they don't repent? What if, what if, Larry, I get mad at you, and I'm going to hold a grudge for you, against you forever? Is there a spirit of love in that? No, I'm, I'm operating in the flesh. And earlier I was talking about why it's important to be sober-minded. Because if I'm drunk all the time, I'm distracted. The enemy's feeding me lies. I'm compromised. And I'm going to be hating you forever in that spirit. That's not the spirit of God. That's the spirit of the devil. Let's go to Romans 1, 28. Romans 1, 28 to 32. So it says, furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They, they are senseless. They are faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. See, this is, this is the enemy right here. This, this is the enemy. What he does is he gets into our minds and he turns us against each other. He finds us in our weakest state, and then he uses us against each other. And that happens because we take our eyes off of God. We need to be focused on God. And I'm not saying you can't have a drink. I'm not saying you can't go out and have a drink with your friends and have a good time. But what I'm saying is when you're drunk, and the Spirit comes in, and you're unaware, and you're unable to control your thoughts, you just made yourself a slave to the enemy. And now you're gossiping about somebody. And you've got to go tell everybody else about your opinion on the matter. That's what we should not do as followers of Christ. That's the worst thing that we can do. In, in, in uh, Scripture it says, in 1 Corinthians 6, 1-8, you don't have to go there. But what it says is, don't take your brother to court before all the unbelievers. Think about that. We're believers. We're, we're, we believe in the Word of God. If we're Christians, if we've been walking with God, He should have changed us. We should have characteristics like Galatians 5.22 talks about. It says, love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You don't have self-control when you're drunk. You don't have self-control when you're following the world. Self-control comes through something that the Spirit of God that is given to you. Now some people reject that. So they can follow the world. So they can be like the world. And the reason it's coming up today is because... It's here. It's made its way here to meeting place already. We just got started and it's already here. I got a phone call on Thursday. I'm not coming to church anymore. Because I can't get along with somebody. And as long as that person's involved, I'm not going to be there.
Where's the love in that? You know, there's a, there's a scripture in Matthew 18 that says, if you have a problem with your brother, go talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. And if you talk to him one-on-one, -on -one and, and they, they hear what you're saying, there's forgiveness, you've gained a brother. That's, that is a final thing, though. That's, that's not even where we're at right now. That's the last step. Many churches, I grew up going to church, and that was always a scripture that was like, let's go to that right now. Listen, wait a minute. I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. There should be some love here. There should be some joy here. If you're having a hard time, you're stuck in addiction, I should have some love for you. I should have some patience for you. And I do. And I want, if you're an alcoholic, I want you to get the help that you need. If you're stuck in addiction, I want you to get the help that you need. Because the Bible tells us to be sober-minded. So there's two parts, two parties in this problem. There's the one that's a drunkard and that loves gossip. Day one in this church, what did I say? If you have a spirit of gossip, I want it gone. Don't bring that here. If there's a spirit of division on you, I don't want that here. Because what we're trying to put together here is a, a, a discipleship. You and I, we're going to serve together. We're going to go out together. I need you to have my back. I need you to hear the words that I'm saying from this pulpit. I need you to hear the word of God. It's not for me, it's God. And this might sound harsh. I know you're listening. But I'm saying it because I love you. I'm saying it because if I, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be trying to correct this problem. First Corinthians 5, 9 to 13, like you can go 1 to 13, but there's a part in there that says, Do not even eat with those, expel the wicked from among you. And I say that because if you're doing this kind of stuff, if you're gossiping, you're getting drunk on your own and you're gossiping, and you're, what we do matters. The things that I say, it matters. The things that I do, it doesn't just affect me. And the Word of God says that we're supposed to be others-minded. So like if I do something without caring how you feel, I'm, I'm just thinking about myself. I'm a selfish individual. I could say something or do something to hurt you, Larry, and maybe you, are, you won't come to church anymore and you won't bring your, your girlfriend, and maybe you, know, maybe you guys have kids and you're not going to bring the kids. It affects everybody involved. And like I said, there's two parties to this. There's another party too. The other party, I, I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I, I mean, I, but when I get that phone call, the first thing I think of is that maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Maybe I shouldn't be preaching. Because that's the enemy, how he works. There's fault on both sides of this story. Because the, the drunkard and the gossiper is no different than the one who God is using you. I hope you're listening. I'm not on today, but I'm sending this. God, God has shown you so much, and He's changed your life, and He has given you a fire, and then now that the trial comes, you're going to give up and turn your back. I said at the beginning of this, we're at war. We're fighting the same battle. You and everybody on this Zoom, everybody in this building, we have the same enemy. And he has waged war on us. And I come up here and I prepare for this every day. And I preach a message every Sunday. Pastor Jaime, you know what this is about. You know how it is. We're fighting this fight. We're doing what we can to take back ground that the enemy stole from us. Amen. I don't need an enemy in my crew. I don't need a Judas. What I need is people that have my back. They say, I want to carry my cross with you, Reuben. For someone to back up and say, I'm done, I'm not going. You don't even think about what you're doing to me and, and, and to my wife. We're here. We're serving God. And you say you're going to take a part here. You, you, you take 
a role here. That's your post. And you're going to abandon that? You're going to abandon that because things ain't going your way, you can't get along with somebody? I wish you would have thought about that because it's not just it's not just you, it's affecting us as well. Earlier this week, I, I asked for prayer on the Zoom call because this was bothering me. And Brother Tom said something. He said, you know what? If people are going to leave, let them go. If they're going to leave for something that simple, let them go. And that's what I have to do. And if someone's going to cause gossip, and deceit, and someone's going to cause the, the division in this church, I don't want them here. So both you parties, I hope you're both listening, both parties, there's a proper response. And that proper response is repentance. You need to repent. You need to get on your knees before the Lord and say you're sorry for what you've done. You need to make things right with your family. I don't want that divisiveness here. I lost a good family because of it. And I love that family and I love you. But I have to be I have to give you the word of God. I have to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. And I hope you make the proper response, which is repentance. You need to ask God to forgive you. And you need to make things right with your family. And this may not just be for you, anybody else that's listening. What's the problem? Is there an alcohol a problem for you? Do you wonder why, why uh, alcohol is a problem? It's because, it's because you're totally lack of self-control when you're drunk. And I, I'm, I'm sorry to everybody else that's hearing this that, you know, that you know, you just wanted to have a, a, a blessed message like we've been having. But we can't be blessed if there's strife in the camp. We can't be blessed if we're fighting each other behind any there's an enemy on the other side. They don't need to be behind me and amongst us. The proper response I have not seen. And I hope I get a phone call from the parties. I hope I have a conversation because I didn't get a chance to talk to any of the parties in this. All I got was I'm not coming and this is why. And that bothers me because I think I deserve more than that. When you lock arms with me and you say, let's go to war together. Imagine if Jesus Christ was carrying that cross up the hill and during, on, the way, on the way to that hill, he says, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm done. I'm done. That's what it feels like when a brother in arms leaves, leaves you while you're in the, in the heat of the battle. I need people that come to this church, and I need people that, I know I have people on the Zoom family. I know Pastor Jaime's got my back. If I'm struggling, I know he's praying for me. Pastor Linda's praying for me. I hope you're listening. That's my message today. I know it sounds harsh, but this is how we're going to deal with things here. I don't want that here. I want us to be one. God wants us to be one. First with Him, and then with each other. Now, I'm not saying everything's going to be perfect. We're never going to have problems, but you know, we deal with them. We talk to each other. We pray together. We work it out. But if somebody's going to come here and walk in the darkness of this world, and bring division into the church, I'm going to address it. Because I've seen this happen before. We went to a church for over 20 years. I saw it. And I thank God that He showed it to me before it even happened. He showed me a demon coming into the church. And that demon came in with a smile on their face. And God showed me in a dream, He showed me this demon's face. And how do I know it was this person? Because I was looking at this person in real life and God let me see something. Their face morphed from their normal face to this demon face that I saw in the dream and then back to their face. And that demon noticed that I recognized it. That I saw that. We don't usually see that stuff. God let me see it. I tried all I can. I told the leadership, I said, look, 
There's something wrong here. This person is not who they claim to be. This person is, is, is the, the devil. The, the name of that devil introduced itself to me in the dream. He, says, I, I, he said, do you know who I am? He says, I, I'm Beelzebub. He says, I, many have died for my name's sake. And my response to that was, you know who I am? I'm a son of the living God. He, Jesus Christ died for me, and he set me free. Beelzebub had no authority over me. But what happened was, started feeding the ego and the pride of the leadership. So the leadership thought this was the greatest person ever. And I loved that church. And I had to watch that church get fall, fall apart. I had to watch it get destroyed. I had to listen to God tell me to leave this place now. In the dream, all I could do was watch. Because it wasn't my church. This is the church God has blessed me with. I'm not going to sit back and watch. Take your divisiveness. Take, take all that stuff. Your gossip. It doesn't belong here. Just so you know, when I got that phone call, I went and did some research. And, and I want to refer to that scripture that I read earlier. But we don't take our brothers to court. Because if we do that, we take our brothers to court. All the unbelievers, they see this bickering. All the unbelievers, they see what's going on. They go, I don't want nothing to do with Christianity. That's why it's so hard. That's why it's so wrong. And you know what? Facebook is your, was your day in court. When you got on Facebook and started talking stuff about this family and this person, I saw it. I went and looked. I wanted to see what's going on. You were the devil's tool. You were working for the devil, gossiping. And that has to stop. The Bible says it's better to be wronged, it's better to be cheated than to take your business before unbelievers. Gossip doesn't belong. Facebook is not for gossip. It's not, it's not so you can trash people. It's not so you can bring people down. You don't want to send pictures of your family, you want to send good, you know what, it's what you make of it. But the proper response is going to be repentance. And I hope that you hear this, and I hope that those parties involved repent. And this message is harsh, but it's the Word of God. I don't, I don't, I don't feel good about giving this kind of a message. But... If I, if I shield you from this and I let stuff happen, this church won't be long here anymore. God's going to close it down. I want Him to bless this church. Amen. Pastor Hyman, will you close this out? Hang on one second. Hang on, I can't hear you. Either. Church. 
any any spirit of uh, gossip, I want it gone. So I, I speak to those spirits right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, you have no authority here. You have been seen. And you have been commanded to leave by the authority that Christ that's in me. In Jesus' name. That's the prayer here. Amen. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everybody that wasn't really a part of the stuff that happened, but I need to address this stuff and I'm not gonna I've seen I've seen a church fall apart before and I'm not gonna see that here. And it happens because we ignore it. It happens because we sweep it under the rug because we're afraid to hurt people's feelings. But you know what? The devil's not afraid to hurt lives. He's not afraid to, to steal from us. He's not afraid to, to tear our children apart, you know, tear our families apart. So we can't be afraid to speak the word of God and, and do, do what must be done. But uh, I love you guys. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you for uh, your support. Anybody have a testimony they want to share? We've all been fought, we've all been battled, we've all seen God heal. Anybody here have a testimony they want to share? What'd you say? Say it again. Sounded like you were underwater in a fishbowl. <laughs> 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 Try that again. Oh, I just want to thank my husband for attending church with me this morning. Amen, Brian. Good to see you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pastor Ruben, yeah. I, I just want to tell you that you don't have to apologize because every single one of us is no exception, and we can easily be um, used by the enemy to cause division. Amen. And so I want to encourage. This message was spot on in season for every single one of us. Amen. We all have to apply it to our life and, um, you know, be a thousand steps ahead of Satan and what he's trying to do. And a lot of times we can be used by Satan and not even realize it. Yep. So right. I just want to tell you, please don't apologize because every single one of us and our households need to hear this message. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think that's more for we have Hannah here. She's never been here before. She's probably walking in here. What's going on at this place? <laughs> It's not normally like this. At least speak the word of God here. This is like the one time. This, this, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is not easy to do. You know, this is, uh, it's not, it's not easy to lose people. And it's not easy to watch the reason why. But God has given us discernment. He's given us authority. And he wants us to prosper. He wants us to do his will. And uh, amen. So that's what we got to do. Thank you again for all your prayers. And it's been a been a rough couple of days for sure dealing with you know battling with uh, preparing for this and stuff and not only that we've all been doing this fast and I'm proud to serve with you all you know everybody that's on here I'm proud to serve with you guys I'm proud to call you brothers and sisters in Christ and uh, everybody here I'm thanking you guys for coming as well and Larry we got to get you here more often buddy <laughs> it's good to see you it's good to I see just you. Amen. Well, it's yeah, you know, it's interesting because with this stuff, this phone call I got, um, <clears throat> then the next day, Pastor Linda's sermon was speaking.